So today's robot hut robot build is uh, I'm going to call it Magnorama, but it's based on a patent from 1891 on a magnetic walking toy. And it's possible to not only have them walk forward, but you can also have them walk backwards. And if you want to add the controls to it, you can also set it up so that they uh, can turn. Starting back in 2010, I think it was, I built my first ones based on the patent, and they were all metal. But now that we have 3D printers, I figured, why not put up some files so you can all build them if you want. And I'll, I'll put up links to some of the old YouTubes on those, but here's a a page you can get close enough maybe you can pull up the the patent number in case you want to look it up and basically it does say model not built which means and it's clear from looking at the patent and the date from 1891 they couldn't have actually built it then they didn't have the technology the motor that drives it would would have been smaller than what you could hand build and the the gear ratio just a single two gear single stage gear reduction would have been too fast the legs would have been going like like this uh, it would need at least a three or four stage gear reduction or go in there with a worm gear to drop it down but basically what's happening is there's there's two magnets one in each foot and there and in this model he adjusts them to an angle so that when one of them is energized it'll then make the whole toy rock till that sits flat on the surface and because the magnets are just going back and forth like windshield wipers that would make the robot move forward and then when it's all the way forward there's a switch up here that then turns this magnet off and turns the next one on which then makes the, the toy rock the other way and by rocking by having the magnets at an angle that lifts the foot that's moving forward off the surface. So, in the case of, of this robot, as you can see, the basically the only thing that you can see happening is the feet, like I said, are going back and forth like windshield wipers. These are the bottoms of the two magnets. In this case, I'm using very small 20 millimeter magnets across. And you're going, well, what, what would I make this toy walk on in my house? I, I don't live on a battleship, so where am I going to make it walk? Well, metal isn't that hard to find in your house. Do you have a microwave oven? The whole top of the microwave oven could be your, your play set. Do you have a little toaster oven? Top of the toaster oven would work. A washer or a dryer that might have a flat top. If you have a chair, you could use the top of the refrigerator. That'll be all metal. Um, this is the side panel off an old um, tower computer. They're metal. You can just lift off and use the side panel. Uh, you have a chest freezer. There's a huge playing field. You could have many robots walking around on one of those puppies. But, as you can see, these ones are wired, are wire controlled. And the robot doesn't have to be wire controlled. You could use, instead of the little 20 millimeter magnets that I used in there you could go in with larger this particular one is a uh, is either a 30 or a 35 millimeter I can't remember which but uh, just cost a little bit more you can see foot to foot it's a little bit bigger I mean you could retrofit them onto this model there's room which gives you uh, more magnetic power more more holding force to the metal which would allow you to put a battery pack inside the robot and and once you have the battery pack in there, you could either go with an IR control or a radio control, or you could go with a programming obstacle avoidance. The entire uh, top of the body. This is a uh, just a kit bash off of Thingiverse, and I'll put I'll put links to all the SDL files into this body if you want to make it. This prints as one piece, sitting like this, and the only supports required are just around the hands. You don't need any supports in here. I have it print two uh, layers where there's a lip that sits on here and you just cut that out with an exacto knife afterwards but because you, there's two layers there it can 
bridge that so you don't need to put a bunch of fill and waste time doing fill. And other than that, it's a hollow body. And let's bring this maybe a little closer. You can kind of see a little bit of what's going on. I'll turn it on and try to get you in the camera. So you can see this is the motor. It's an inexpensive motor off of eBay. The magnets I got off of eBay. And in fact, the seller for these these 20 meter magnets also provide you with the 12 volt power supply. So you get two magnets and a 12 volt power supply for it was under it was under twelve dollars with shipping and everything. So basically this motor and as you can see it walks just fine without the body. My main point of taking the body off to show you there's quite a bit of room if you wanted to add battery packs or if you wanted to add programming control. Here's a look at the uh, type of motor. They're easily found. It's got a, uh, a double D shaft on it which makes it easy to <clears throat> mount the cam that we were just looking at there a second ago. You can see this cam does two things. And one it has a little pin and two it has this outside part as this cam turns around, the pin is what's making the legs wigway back and forth, and I'll show you that more in a second. And this outside perimeter is what's controlling the micro switch, which turns one uh, leg solenoid on and the other, or the other, depending on which, which way you're going. There's this um, upper frame piece, which is this piece here. So you can see the motor. A drop in there. There's two places for screws. I'm just using some small number two screws. It threads that in. Then the cam drops down onto the motor. Uh, the motors are threaded and tapped, and that's I believe it was set for a number three. I think. Yeah, a number a metric number three machine screw. Not that the cam really needs it because it presses on tight and if you didn't have the number three machine screw you could always put some glue on there and, and press it on. And then this uh, this plate area here that's kind of built up with multi holes, that's where the micro switch is going to go. And I think I've got some in the other room. I can, I'll bring them in and show you what the micro switch is going to be. Most common micro switches come in two styles, and I think, yeah, right now in the bag that I've got, I've only got the one style with a roller. But it, they also come looking like this, you know, without a roller. And that's why there's multiple sets of holes on here, because the switch is going to go on to this plate like that. And this bottom hole works with either switch, but if you have the roller, then you use the hole that's further back. And if you have the uh, micro switch that doesn't have the roller, then you use the front hole. In any case, you can always bend the uh, metal arm, lever, whatever you'd like to call it. Bend it till it contacts the, uh, contacts the cam so that everything works right. And then once you have that whole assembly made, that's going to screw onto the lower part. Basically, the uh, 20 millimeter magnets that I'm using in the feet here, this one's larger, as I pointed out earlier, but it's the same thing. They're threaded, and they're always metric threads. The 20 millimeter ones have a 3 millimeter thread hole in them, so you need to get some 3 millimeter thread stock, which you, again you can buy online. And if you're in America, it's kind of a hard to find unless you order it online. This larger magnet, I believe this is a, a, a 4 millimeter in here, so you'd have to get a larger thread rod. I had some uh, thread rods left over from. Uh, some old toy gear boxes or something that just happened to be three millimeter. I just had to do some uh, cutting and trimming and threading them down. But basically, what I did is I, I would run a nut down 
and then this little gear part which we print out thread it all the way down to the nut then bring another nut on top of that to lock it and then cut off the extra thread stock in my case if you had threaded rod you could do it all thin you wouldn't have to do any cutting there then that of course runs through this whole leg assembly and at this end you would thread the uh, magnet on the end of it and again you could use a locking nut to lock it on there so you can see up here in the top you end up with each leg having a, a gear which you would want facing in basically and then there's this lever which is held on with a, a single screw a pivot screw which you leave loose enough to move so that as this lever moves back and forth and this lever is going to move back and forth because of the the rotating cam that has this pin sits right there that's what makes the uh, the leg magnets move back and forth so in the end your whole your whole contraption looks pretty much like this I'll, I'll turn this on and see if we can get some different angles maybe you can see in there a little better I uh, I simply brought the magnet wires up through two holes which print in this base piece and by the way this base piece that we're talking about prints like this on the bed one piece no support these foot covers are separate and they're not even glued on you simply put them on if you if you like the way they look I did two different styles of foot covers I did one that's just a, a round dome shape and initially I even uh, angled one edge which would be on the inside areas of the feet so basically there is a left and a right on this one my thought was because the magnets have to tip that the edge might be in the way but in reality since it isn't glued on it can just move out of the way and just presses up against there and it'll it'll work just fine so anyway, I brought the magnet wires down through these little holes then to make everything simple I took all the magnet wires and, and brought them all the way up through the top motor plate and brought my power cord all the way up through the top plate so now everything is sticking out up here and just ran a cable tie around this rear post you can see this piece screws on with three screws so that way I could do all my wiring top side um, just bringing in the 12 volts DC through this wire and you're going well where do I get a wire like that this particular case this is a um, actually uh, an audio cable like an extension mp3 cable but another good place to get small flexible cable that has multi-core wires in it like if I did want to control forward and backward and all those other things and stay on a wire remote would be USB type cables um, a mouse cable uh, anything like that that's small and flexible they'll nor normally have anywhere from three to four and sometimes more conductors in the bundle so I brought my power up and uh, hooked the motor to two of them, tested that part and made sure everything was not binding and running and, and working right in there. And then uh, on your magnets, just grab one wire from each magnet and bring them to the common ground and solder them on. And then you take one wire from each magnet and bring them down to that micro switch. There'll be micro switches are marked with a C uh, an NO and an NC and the C means common and the common I brought a wire and soldered it to the positive so that means no matter what state that switch is in one of the other two is going to be conducting NO is normally open meaning if that leaf if you're not pushing on it that one will be open not conducting the NC means normally closed that means if you're not pushing on the leaf that one would be conducting so by soldering those magnets on there you could which way you solder them on you could have your robot walking forward or backward or you can reverse them um, if you've set your micro switch up, switch up right so that it'll work on the cam without uh, binding usually the best way to do that is to bend a little edge on that leaf arm of the micro switch because you don't want it to bind up when the cam comes around if you've got that set up where it'll, the motor can run either way without that binding or hang, hanging up then you, all you have to do is just reverse the power to the entire thing and make it walk forward or backward so let's 
I'm not sure how much is getting in there, but if you can see in there, just all pins together and and works. Of course, you could redesign it with a uh, faster motor and get faster walking action. I'll have links below on some of the build pages that I did back in uh, 2010, 2011, and you'll see some that walk very fast. One that has a even has an over drive mode and ones where I made them where they turn left and right forward and backwards so you can do all those different things it's just a very simple little building block that you could design your own body for put your own body on there it doesn't have to be the the one that I did that's kind of loosely based off bender but it could be anything you like the body just slips down on there like so. To get my forward and backward, I just took a uh, double pull, double throw switch that had a center off position because that way I could also turn the, the whole thing off. But then if I move the switch in the other direction, it just reverses the voltage so you can get a forward and backward all in one unit. So there isn't much money involved in, in the project. Like I say, you've got less than uh, less than twelve dollars on the magnets and a power supply if you wanted to do it you've got a, a few dollars invested in the motor if you end up having to get the threaded rod again you've you've maybe got a couple of dollars invested in that unless you can find some place to scrunch some up it is possible to just take in america 440 thread stock which is something that you can find at your hobby hobby centers and also even at your uh, home home centers and you can kind of force the, the 440 into the, the magnets and the feet. It won't go in real far because the, the threads are very similar, but they're just enough different, you know what I mean? So that is an option. You could uh, force them in and glue them if you had to and go that route. Call it good. But should be a fun little project. I'll put as many links as I can. I'll put the Thingiverse links uh, down in the description. You can see on this one here, I actually went ahead and, and added some uh, LEDs in the eyes. And you could add the LEDs to the eyes and still do with the forward and reverse trick. It's uh, depending on how you wire it, you might not have to do anything other than run separate control wires to wherever you're going to do it or your control in there. But you could put a diode bridge before the LEDs in there too, so it wouldn't matter which polarity voltage came, the diode bridge would keep it right so the lights were happy. Or you could use um, multicolor LEDs, an RGB LED, and when the voltage reverses, the color could change. Forward, maybe you have red eyes, and walking reverse, maybe you have green eyes. There's a lot of, a lot of options and things that you can do. You can see this one, I just put the, the round feet in. I thought it made it look more uh, cartoon-like. This one I put a uh, larger foot base in so it would stand better on display. I wouldn't have to worry about it toppling over. Um, this one obviously is, I painted. I uh, just took some chrome paint to it. Paint the heck out of it. <coughs> I didn't do a whole lot of um, time cleaning things up. Could have been smoother, of course, on the top of the head and the top of the shoulders. But the rest of it turned out pretty good. So feel free to build it, post builds, share info, uh, make new bodies. Let's, let's see some fun builds happening here. It's very simple, very unique robot that uh, could be fun to build. And if you make multiples of them, you can have a little magnetic robot battles. Because again, I say it doesn't have to walk this slow. Just by redesigning the mount for the motor, you could drop in different motors in there and, and get different speeds. It just so happens that this little guy was very inexpensive and was going to occupy a little space when I designed it. I didn't know what kind of body I was going to put on this. It just seemed like a fun one to try, but it is a little bit on the slow side. All right, have fun, build, share.